Hey, 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 everyone. Well, at least it's nice to know that those in the establishment media are paying attention and heeding the warnings and starting to recognize some of the signals, some of the messaging that those who stand up for individual rights or freedom have been trying to send. You know, a lot of us out here, we've been kind of subtle. Let's, let's just admit it, folks. Most of us, the reasonable ones anyways, have been very subtle in our approach and trying to point out to the ruling class, those who think they're our authorities, that, you know what, we're not going to stand for your shit for much longer. And the more you keep pushing for this kind of central plan and this kind of authoritarianism, this kind of collectivism in these Western countries that were built and developed based on Enlightenment era values and standing up for individual rights, freedoms, and liberties, yeah, it's about time that, you know, maybe what? Well, actually, let me just preface right now. I'm not all about revolutions. Because even the very concept, even the very definition of a revolution is you end up back in the same place. You know, revolution. You always end up back in the same place. No, it's all about evolution. And when I coined the phrase, when I coined the term, I call it intellectual evolution. And since we live in the information age, I added 2.0. So we live in the age of information that is a representation of the Enlightenment era 2.0. And these motherfucking piece of shit central planners, these authoritarians, these political hacks, these petty thugs, these tyrants, these order followers, right? Don't leave the order followers there because ultimately the order followers are the ones that carry out the edicts of their political masters. All of you need to start to recognize that there's a lot of people out here that our freedoms have been denied or destroyed in regards to our lives socially and economically that it gets, we're getting to the point where, hey, there's not much left to lose, folks. And what happens when you have a whole cohort of people in any society that haven't got much to lose and they're willing to stand up for the rights of freedom because they realize if they don't, <laughs> that's, that's their last bash and that's their last hope. Well, yeah, things can eventually and ultimately turn to violence. Nobody wants that. You know, even even people like myself. Yeah, I don't promote violence on any way, in any way, shape, or form, I, or on any scale. Like you know, well, except for defensive measures, except as a defensive means. <laughs> that is where I actually dream about and actually enjoy using violence. Oh, you fuck with me? Oh, I'm coming the fuck back at you. And even though, if you knew me as a person, like out there on the street, well, most people that do know me, you'd be like, Bennett? Nah, man, he's fucking, nice. guy's awesome. He don't mess with nobody. He he leaves everybody alone. Hey, hey, don't fuck with him. He'll never fuck with you. And that's actually a true statement. But there are many other people that have known me throughout the course of my 40, almost 48 years of existence. They'll tell you, but when you do fuck with them, <laughs> you better watch the fuck out because it's like Dr. And Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh, he goes from this really, really nice, easy going, live, let, lift kind of guy to all of a sudden it's like, whoa, fuck, whoa, 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 his eyes are red. What the, what the fangs coming out from his fucking mouth now? Oh, his fists are up and much more <laughs> if you push things too far. But yeah, so it's just a reality, folks, that the people like myself or those who stand up and fight for individual rights or freedom, such as Cody Wilson, listen, Cody's not a bad guy. Come on, this is a young man. He's, a, an, he's an intellectual. He's a genius. He's, he even des describes himself as, a, as like a quasi-nerd to a certain degree. But he, he's just a guy that's willing to stand up and defend his rights and freedoms and the rights and freedoms that he understands to be intrinsic, inalienable, and what do you want to call it, God-given or just as a part of being born on this planet we call Earth is all those rights and freedoms that we constantly espouse, it requires responsibility and that responsibility entails being willing and able to defend them. If you're not willing and able to defend your rights and freedoms, they don't exist. But the people in the established media, and this is in reference to a CBC News article, and it's all from The Current, right? <laughs> the Current. And there is a 19-minute audio segment embedded in this uh, article that I, that, well, all you got to do is go through the article and click on it. And I, I do suggest you listen to it. I won't be sharing it in this particular video because when I do those things, it does cause my videos to stretch out much longer than I think I really need them to be. 
But listen to this headline, folks. Blood on their hands. Critics decry a U.S. decision to allow 3D printed gun blueprints online. The right to live trumps the right to print a gun at home, gun control advocate says. <laughs> but this gun control advocate, if it's, I would agree with him or I'm guessing it's probably a her, but it could be a him, right? But yeah, the right to live. Well, if, if you have a gun or a means to defend yourself against anyone that oppresses you or wants to use violence or criminal acts towards you, that's how you do it, right? The right to live. The right to live is the, the headline here or the sub portion of the headline. It's like, well, how do you have a right to live? What, what are you going to stand in front of a criminal or someone that's opposing you or trying to oppress you, right? Whether it's through preemptive political force, which is, you know, the use of the, the imminent threat of force or violence against you. Well, how are you going to defend yourself? That right to life requires that you defend yourself. <laughs> but apparently this person doesn't realize that you re that requires you to be personally responsible to defend your life. Because you know what? Unless you have a cop that sits on your shoulder with what? A big giant weapon. Well, I guess 20 or 30 times size of what? That little cop sitting on your shoulder is, or that, that, was he following you around everywhere you go or something? Or she, I guess, hey, hey, let's be politically correct, right? He or she, nobody's there to protect you at every given moment and every time and every day throughout your life. So who's ultimately on the hook for defending your life but you? And how are you going to do that with a weapon of sorts, right? So these Gun control advocates don't even really mean what they say. It's just that they want certain people to have guns and other people not. Especially people that they deem to be their political opponents. The creator of the first 3D printed gun says he would regret it immensely if his blueprints were used to create a weapon involved in a mass shooting. But he maintains that the plans should be freely available. Cody Wilson, the founder and director of Austin-based Defense Distributed, recently won a four-year battle against the U.S. State Be Department to make his blueprints available online. The self-described free speech fundamentalist is also the founder of a crowdfunding website that gives people who have been banned online for hate speech, like white nationalist Richard Spencer, a platform. So, so what? Like, see how already they're they're painting. That is being somehow negative. Listen, freedom of speech. It's speech. It's speech. It's words. If you don't want to hear the words that people are espousing, don't listen to them. It's just speech. It's just words. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Remember that saying? Well, <laughs> if you're at least Gen X or older, you sure as shit do. Can't say much for you younger people, but I'm sure you've heard something at least along those lines, right? Inspired by WikiLeaks, Wilson learned everything he could about guns, gun manufacturing, and 3D printing, and in 2013, he created the Liberator, the first 3D printed gun, and uploaded its blueprints online. Files for the Liberator gun were quickly downloaded more than 100,000 times. There was already a large American gun culture here, so from my point of view, it was equal parts outrage and equal parts kind of interest and even delight, Wilson told the current guest host, Duncan McHugh, about the response at the time. The U.S. government ordered Wilson to remove the files, arguing that they violated the terms of the International Traffic in Arms Regulation, which controls what defense and military materials are exported. Wilson and his legal team argued the First Amendment and Second Amendment, free speech and the right to bear arms, were violated. He won on the free speech claim. I was as shocked as anyone else, Wilson said, reflecting on his win. At some point, it seemed the government just walked away from their position, which is not to be expected after this many years in. As of August 1st, his plans detailing how to make a 3D gun, as well as blueprints made by other people, will be again posted on his site. In Canada, however, it is illegal to manufacture or possess a firearm without appropriate licenses and applicable registrations, the RCMP previously told CBC News. In addition, a firearms business license is needed to manufacture a gun. Wilson said he considers it important for people to know how to make a gun or have access to such drawings. That may not mean that you can immediately reproduce in your home, but it's a step towards doing something like that. Anyways, just let me reference real quick this part where in Canada it is illegal to, you know what, in Canada it's illegal to do a lot of things. Guess what? 
criminals or people that just don't recognize these political edicts as being anything remotely resembling an actual genuine law that makes sense as far as you know being universally moral or ethical or consistent in any way <laughs> guess what they've always ignored this shit so you know you can write all the laws you can put this legislation you can put your pen and paper you know you can put that into action right you can stand there and vote I or nay, you know, to all these fucking legislative acts, but it's not going to prevent people from doing something that they want to do. That's the thing. Politicians, <laughs> it doesn't actually negate or deny people's ability to circumvent political decrees. <laughs> as much as they wish they could, it doesn't. Because the only people that follow the orders or the edicts of politicians are like really conformist or people that just don't want to challenge their political or their supposed authority. But there are a lot of people out there that love to challenge it and actually will do it in a manner that supersedes even the kind of pretense of violence and authority that the, the so-called so central planners, the so-called authorities have. Well, their opponents, their detractors, they have that same kind of violent tendencies. Well, some of them do. And you know what? No law on the books, written down on parchment or paper, are going to prevent these people from, you know, doing what they deem necessary to stand up for their own rights or freedoms or liberties. So, once again, and, and if you need any further proof of how, proof how political edicts don't really have the effect that people wish it did, go to any prison. Even maximum security prison, they see, how the hell do they get all these contraband, all these drugs, all these things that are illegal in a prison? In a maximum security prison. Because people are people. We're all fallible. We all have our own way of doing things. Central planners have never found a way, and they will never in the future find a way to, you know, make us all obedient serfs and slaves to their political edicts. It's, it's never going to happen. <laughs> and that is pure utopian thinking to dream up any scenario where that could possibly happen. Well, they tried that, you know, under, you know, Nazism, under the German, under Hitler, right? right? Or fascism under Mussolini or communism under Mao or Stalin or Lenin or, I mean, there's... <laughs> Yeah, these central planners, these utopians, yeah, they've thought up and they've dreamt up many different ways that they can disarm the populace and, and make everyone equal or aligned or conformist to the political edicts. But when the hell has that ever succeeded? Never. That's pure utopian thinking, people. That's what I mean. People suggest that libertarians are utopian thinkers and, and just dream of these scenarios that are just so far out, man. Yeah status no that's the those are the people that are truly indoctrinated into an ideology that is not based on anything even remotely resembling real life or reality but they keep putting forth right they keep using these same authoritarian methods and implementations and and legislative acts to try to uh legislate morality somehow it's never happened in history it's not going to happen now and i don't see it happen anytime in the future I'll post a link to this article in the description of the video, but I just wanted to point out that, hey, the media knows what's going on, and they know the pushback is out there. So maybe that's why they're becoming more meek nowadays. I don't hear them being quite as sensationalized in their tabloid-style reporting as they have been in recent months or recent years. Somehow they seem to be cooling off a little bit. Maybe they're recognizing that, oh, we might have pushed things a little too far. And if they are, well, it tells me that at least they're a little bit wise. At least a little bit, right? Got to give them credit where credit's due. And maybe they're starting to recognize that, yeah, you can do all the, you know, pushback and authoritarian measures that you want. But uh, someday you'll realize that mm, it's, it was a fruitless venture. And ultimately, not only did you fail, but you've made yourself a big, giant target as a result. It's a Canadian libertarian, and I love liberty.